The Adventures of Tintin by Hergé. Dramatized by Simon Eastwood. Two, The Secret of the Unicorn. To the editor and Tintin, famous boy reporter. Subject, clues to missing treasure. Little did I suspect that the model ship I bought for my friend, Captain Haddock, would hold the secret to the whereabouts of missing treasure and that I would have to confront those who would do anything to stop me from finding it. An alarming rise in the number of pickpockets have been reported in the past few weeks. The police are using their best men to put a stop to this public scandal. Eyes peel, Thompson. We must catch these fiendish crooks quite. As guardians of public order, we must bring these crooks to books. I say, look, crooks, gazooks, no, tintin. I say. Snowy? Snowy? All right, all right. I know if you could hear me speak, I could tell you I was trying to have this peaceful scratch. Look, on that stall, Snowy, isn't that a fine ship? Oh, I'd prefer it if it was a bow. It really is a beauty. I have a good mind to buy it for Captain Haddock. Tintin! Why, it's the Thompson twins. What are you doing here? Looking for bargains? Highly confidential. Special operations. Pickpockets. To be precise. Mum's the word. How much for those walking sticks, my good man? Five pounds for the lot, mate. Four pounds. Three pounds fifty. All right. Four pounds fifty. But I'm robbing myself. See, war's got to haggle a bit in this market. Take my money, my good man. My wallet's been stolen. Oh, surprise, surprise. But that's absurd. You must have left it at home. Or perhaps you've lost it. Lost it? No, I'm sure someone's stolen it. Here, hold these sticks. I'll pay. Oh, I say, mine's gone too. Now there's a coincidence. Really should take more care, Thompson. Be precise. Here, let me pay for them. Oh, thanks very much, Tintin. We'll pay you back tomorrow. Indeed we will. We're going to find a policeman straight away. Goodbye. 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 What a pair. Now, uh, could you tell me how much this ship is, please? Uh, Fifteen pounds. It's a unique specimen. Ten pounds. Uh, done. Yours for a ten. How much is that ship? Oh, sorry, mate. I've just sold it to this young gentleman. Uh, well, I- I'll buy it from you. I'm sorry, but it's not for sale. Well, how much did you pay? I'll give you double for it. Thanks, but I'm keeping it. You, you can't refuse thirty pounds. I'm sorry. Forty. No. Fifty pounds. Fifty, I'll have it back. Fifty? Look here, I want to give this to a friend of mine. I'm not selling it, so please don't pester me any more. Come on, Snowy. Let's go home. (laughs) It really is superb. I'll put it on the table for now. Captain Haddock will be delighted. But you think of all the bones you could have bought for ten pounds. I wonder why that man was so keen to buy my ship. Let alone (laughs) fifty. All right. I expect that's the captain now. I apologise, it's me again. Uh, Forgive me if I'm insistent, but I'm a collector, you see, and I would be so very grateful if you would agree to sell me your ship. I've already told you I bought it for a friend. Exactly. Now, I have other ships, just as good as yours, and we could exchange them so that you're... Please, it's no good. Don't go on. I'm keeping it. Very well. But I think you're making a big mistake. Perhaps you'll change your mind. I shouldn't count on it. Well, I shall hope. I feel sure our paths will cross again. (laughs) That's as may be. For now, though, goodbye, sir. (laughs) Snowy, what have you done? You've knocked it to the ground. I was just trying to get a closer look. The mask's broken. Uh, How many times have I told you not to climb on the table? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) This time it must be the captain. Hello, Captain Haddock. How wonderful to see you. Come on in. I've got a surprise for you over here. Jim, Jim, what a magnificent ship. And thundering typhoons. Where did you find it? In the old street market. Why? What a remarkable coincidence. Imagine. No, come with me back to my place. Then you'll see. <laughs> at this painting. Is that you? No, it's one of my ancestors, Sir Francis Haddock. He lived in the reign of Charles II. But just take a closer look at that ship in the background. Why, it's just like the one I bought. Exactly. It's the same ship. It's identical. Don't you think that's remarkable? There's a name here on the ship. Look, in tiny letters. Unicorn. So there is. Unicorn. I've never noticed it. Maybe there's a name on mine, too. We should have brought it along. 
Wait here, I'll go and fetch it. Oh dear, I have the feeling this is the start of another adventure. <laughs> Great snakes! The place has been ransacked! Oh, the gangsters! What have they done to my books? I certainly haven't been reading them. And the <laughs> unicorn! Look, Snow, it's been smashed to pieces, but why and by whom? Um, hold on, I'll just get my crystal ball out. <laughs> Very queer, these. They haven't taken a thing. <laughs> They've only searched the place. I wonder what they were looking for. <sighs> anyway, it's getting late. We'll see Captain Haddock tomorrow. I'll clear up in the morning. Let's go to bed. Goodness, what a mess. <laughs> Coming. Well, Thompson and Thompson, good morning. Shouldn't you be looking for pickpockets? Good morning, Tintin. We've come to pay you the money for those sticks. We called on you last night, but you were out. Did you get your wallets back? I'm afraid not, but... Uh... I bought a new one this morning, and goodness gracious, I've been robbed again. I would never have guessed. Why? Mine's gone too. You don't say. Great Scotland Yard, that man we met last night outside Tintin's door. I remember now, he bumped into me. He bumped into me too. What was he like? My tall, coarse features, black hair, small black moustache. He was sight a scoundrel. That's him, the man who tried to buy the unicorn off me. Guilty. He was sight Let's nail the bounder. Uh, but he couldn't have stolen your wallets last night, gentlemen. You only bought them this morning. Oh, well, there's, there's something in what you say. The miserable thieves, a brand new wallet. Come along, Thompson. We must find a policeman. Watch out for the step. Oh, uh, too late. He's right. We must report this at once. Yes, watch out for the step. Oh, oh, too late again. Hey, Thompson, wait for me. Poor old Thompsons. They do have rotten luck. Oh, well. Let's try and get this mess sorted out. Oh, there's something under here, Tintin. A cigarette under that chest, but I don't smoke. Why, it's not a cigarette. It's a scroll of parchment. Let's have a closer look at it. Hmm. Three brothers joined. Three unicorns in company, sailing in the noonday sun, will speak. For tis from the light that light will dawn. And then shines forth the eagle's cross. Oh, it's all gibberish. Sounds good, though. And where on earth did this parchment come from, anyway? Great snakes! I've got it! It must have been rolled up inside the mast of the ship. It then fell out when Snowy broke the mast. It's all right, you don't have to remind me. And rolled under the chest, which explains something else. Whoever smashed my ship knew that the parchment was hidden there. <laughs> when he discovered the scroll had gone, he thought I must have found it. That's why he ransacked the rest of my flat. Tintin, you're a real Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> mm. But who could it have been? Why, of course, the man who tried to buy the unicorn off me. The Thompsons saw him outside my door last night. I knew there was something strange about him. Mm -hmm. But why was he so anxious to get hold of it? Uh... Unless... Yes, that must be it. What? There's no other answer. Quick, Snowy, we must see the captain. Why? What, what, what is it now? Treasure, Snowy. Come on, this is going to be a treasure hunt. <laughs> Captain, it's Tintin. Avast, your dogs, sea cucumbers, baboons, buccaneers, filibusters, bagpipers, gallows fodder. Oh, dear, he's had a few to drink. Calm yourself, Captain. With one that's got him on the run. Yo ho ho, and a bottle of rum. What's all this play acting for? Why the costume? It isn't play acting. Come in and you'll understand. Now then. You see that man in the painting? Yes, Sir Francis Haddock. What about him? Sir Francis, one of the West Country Haddocks. Oh. Well, last night when I was thinking about this strange business of the ships, I suddenly remembered that up in the attic I had an old sea chest belonging to my ancestor. In the chest I, I found this hat and cutlass and also... I know, treasure. Or a treasure map. No, not treasure. Old manuscripts. Look! I started reading them yesterday evening and read all night. I was still reading when you came in. That, that's why you found me a little uh, overexcited. But what a story! 
Just listen to this. Why doesn't he take that silly hat off? It is the year 1676. The unicorn, a valiant ship of King Charles II's fleet, under the command of Sir Francis Haddock, has left Barbados in the West Indies and set sail for home. She carries a cargo... Well, anyway, there's a good deal of rum aboard. Some things never change. <sighs> a two days at sea, a good stiff breeze, and the unicorn is reaching on a start. Suddenly, there's a hail aloft. Hail on the port for her! Sail on the port for her! Sail on the port for her! A pirate ship cuts across the unicorn's bows. Sir Francis reacts immediately. Ready about! Aye. Let go the braces! Aye. Beat the quarters! Gunners, fire as she Close hold, the enemy falls in line astern with the unicorn. She draws closer. Then suddenly, not more than half a cable's length away, she slips from under the unicorn's poop. Ooh, that must have been painful. Then she resumes her course. The two ships are now alongside. The boarders prepare for oh! action. Grappling oh! irons are hurled from the enemy ship. With hideous yells, the pirates scream aboard the unicorn. A mighty battle ensues. Single-handedly, Sir Francis manages to slay a dozen pirates. Hey, that a swamp! Finally, he's overcome. You'll pay better! The pirates become masters of the ship. They hoist the Jolly Roger, and no quarter is given. Every man Jack walks the plank. <laughs> and Sir Francis? Sir Francis, yes. When he comes round, he finds himself securely lashed to his own mast. Oh, he suffers terribly. From torture, of course. Uh, no, from thirst. Ah, oh, poor man, how he suffered. Then a man approaches him wearing a crimson cloak embroidered with a skull. He is the pirate chief. He comes nearer, his breath reeking of rum. Regard me well, dog. I am Red Rackham. And I am Sir Francis Haddock. Listen to me. More than half my crew are dead or wounded. My ship is foundering damaged by your cannon fire. She's sinking. So my men are transferring to this ship the booty we captured from a Spaniard three days ago. And what booty? Diamonds worth more than six times a king's ransom. Did you come here just to tell me that? No, that's not why I came. I came to tell you that those who annoy me pay dearly for their folly. Tomorrow morning I shall hand you over to my crew. I spit on you, scum. <sighs> that's as maybe. But that flock of lambs know just how to administer a lingering death. Towards nightfall, the unicorn with her pirate crew sight a small island. She drops anchor in a sheltered cove. The pirates find the unicorn's cargo of rum, broach the casks, and make themselves abominably drunk. Like that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sir Francis, struggling desperately, manages to free himself. He creeps down into the magazine, where the ship's gunpowder and shot is stored. There now, that'll make the party go with a bang. No, I must make haste before she goes up. Sir Francis slips over the side of the unicorn and to the Jolly Roger's jolly boat. The last sounds he hears from the unicorn come from two drunken pirates. Just look at that you jolly boat, look at it. It's going away. You're as drunk you are. <laughs> then it's all over.
so perished the unicorn. And of all the pirates aboard her, not one escaped with his life. What happened to Sir Francis after that? He made friends with the natives on a nearby island and lived among them for two years. Then he was picked up by a ship which carried him back home. There, his journal ends. But now comes the strangest part of the whole story. <laughs> you mean it can get stranger? On the last page of the manuscript is a sort of will, in which he bequeaths to each of his three sons a model, built and rigged by himself, a, a model of the very ship he once blew up rather than leave it to the pirates. And there's one funny detail. He, he tells his sons to move the mainmast slightly aft on each model. Thus, he concludes... The truth will out. That's it, Captain. Red Rackham's treasure will be ours. What do you mean? I mean that I happen to have one of those scrolls. Snowy moved the main mast off for me. But do I get any credit? Look, here in my wallet. Someone's stolen it. Oh, this is getting ridiculous. Stolen it? But I'm sure that if we can collect the three scrolls together, then we shall find Red Rackham's diamonds. And how do we go about doing that? Good question. First of all, I must give Snowy a drink. Report my wallet's been stolen. Oh, I'll come with you. Oh, Mr. Tintin. Yes, what? Why? Uh, it's the man who tried to buy the unicorn from me. So you're the villain. I don't know. No, no, no. Please, please. This is very important. My name is Barnaby. I'd like a word with you, Mr. Tintin. But not here, if you don't mind. It would be uh, quieter inside. All right, but... Been stolen. Well, this is getting beyond a joke. You must take care. They'll, they'll kill you too. Who? Who are they? Tell us. Uh, up there. Sparrows? <coughs> Why is he pointing at sparrows? What do you mean? Oh. Christ, he's fainted. Ah, good morning, Captain. Come in. I'm just telephoning the hospital for news of the wounded man. Oh, it's no good. He's dead. Hello, is that the house surgeon? This is Tintin. Still unconscious? What? Is there any hope? A little? Oh, yes, thank you. Goodbye. Uh, but, 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 but look here, it says in the paper that he's dead. Yes, the papers were told he died. That's so the crooks will believe he didn't give them away, so they won't be on their guard. Ah, fiendishly clever. But I wonder what the poor chap meant pointing at those sparrows. Perhaps he wasn't feeling too chirpy. I don't know, Captain. It's all very mysterious. To be precise, very mysterious, as the Thompsons would say. Hello? Ah, we were just talking about you. Yes? Yes? What? It's amazing. I'll come at once. Come with me, Captain. We're off to the police station. What for? The Thompsons have found my wallet. <laughs> There's no mistake, it's mine, all right. He had seven in his pockets. The day's takings, no doubt. Here's the parchment from the unicorn's mast. Look, Captain. Splendid! Oh, if only our injured man's wallet had been found. Tell me, how did you manage to catch the thief? Uh, catch him? Well, to be quite honest, we, we only managed to catch his morning coat. <laughs> you see, I was attached to my wallet via an elastic band. So when he snatched the wallet, he took me with him. Unfortunately, when we grabbed him, he slipped out of his coat. To be precise, he gave us the slip. Mm. Look at this label. It's got a number on it. That means the coat has been to the cleaners recently. Goodness, you're right. So, to find the thief's name and address, we've only got to trace the cleaners who use this label. Quick, we'll start hunting. To be precise, at once. <laughs> While the Thompsons set out to bring the wallet thief to justice, for three days I pondered the whereabouts of Barnaby's mysterious would-be assassins. Perhaps it was they who held the two missing parchments. On the fourth day, Snowy and I were sitting contemplating early retirement, when out of the blue, someone came to the door. <coughs> I wonder who that can be. Mr Tintin, here's a new bath you ordered. I haven't ordered anything. But it's addressed to you. Look. So it is. Uh, may I look inside? Oh, no! 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 Oh, no!
Chloroform's done a trick. Uh, quick, shove him in the crate and put him in a van. Yeah, right. They're kidnapping Tintin. That on a tight, he will end up in a stew. Let's get in the van. Right. Shut up. Don't think you can get rid of me that easily, you thugs. Don't worry, Tintin, I'll save you. Tintin! 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 Wake up, Tintin. Wake up. Hmm? Where am I? In the cellar. I wasn't dreaming. Someone spoke. Yes. Can you see the speaking tube? Who are you and what do you want with me? <laughs> you must allow me to remain anonymous. I want to know where you have hidden the two parchments Barnaby stole from me. Me? But, but I never had more than one. Come on now, be sensible. And I collected two of the three scrolls, but that traitor Barnaby, whose job it was to find a third, decided to take them from me and see if you would offer him a better deal than I had. I now have the one that you found. Where are the other two? How should I know? In Barnaby's wallet, probably, which was stolen. Come, come, you will have to do better than that. I'll give you two hours to tell me where you hid those scrolls. But I tell you... Hello? Oh, he's cut off, the gangster. How do I get out of this one? Hang on, Tintin. I'm coming to the rescue. <laughs> That's the trouble with being a dog. You can't hitch a lift. <laughs> oh, one hour now. One hour to get out of here. How can I do it? I wonder if I could use this fallen beam as a battering ram against the wall. First, I'd better block up the speaking tube with my handkerchief. Then no one will hear any noises I may make. Now, if I knot these sheets and blankets together, tie one end to the beam, and loop the other end through that iron ring in the ceiling, I might just have a chance. What I said about early retirement, Tintin. I meant it. Don't worry, George. He'll talk. Did you hear that, Max? Yes, a muffled thud. Took the whole house. Hey, Gat, there it is again. That's odd. Sounded as if it came from the cellars. Mm. By thunder, it must be Tintin. Come on, George. We'll see what's happening. <laughs> Hooray! There she goes! Quick, no time to lose. What's through here? Why, it's another room, like a museum full of artifacts. Over there, now. By thunder, he's rammed a hole from the wall. Oh, no, they're onto me. I'll have to hide. Uh, there's plenty of hiding places, but he won't get far. He's right. The statue won't keep me covered for long. You might as well make it easy for yourself, Tintin. Accounting for him. It's my only chance. I'll smash it and let the beads do the rest. Here I am, gentlemen, oh. and here you are. Oh, 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 oh. Now, back through the wall. <clears throat> I'm in luck. They left the door open. And the keys are still in it. And now, tough guys, it's your turn to be locked in. Now to find some assistance. This must be the study. And there's the speaking tube. So this is where my hosts were talking to me from. What's this letter? Messrs M and G Bird, antique dealers, Marlin Spike Hall, Marlinshire. Bird! Now I see what Barnaby meant when he was pointing at the birds. He was giving us the name of his attackers. I must ring up the captain. Come on, captain, come on. Excuse me, sir. I'm Nestor. Butler to Mr. Bird. Uh, may I ask what you're doing here? I, uh, I'm Mr. Bird's new secretary. Didn't you know? Oh, no, I didn't. Uh... Uh, captain had experience. Captain, it's Tintin. Tintin, where are you? Hello, Nestor. A young ruffian has broken into the house. It's a speaking tube. Stop him. Don't 
let him get away. Hello, Captain. I'm at Marlin Spike Hall. Bring the police. But in Greece? In, not in Greece, in Marlin Spike Hall. Stop that no. telephone. What's going on? Starling's bike? Marlin Spike, Captain. Marlin Spike I Hall. Oh, Robert. Like Martin's bike? I'm sorry about this, sir, but uh, take that. Uh, what the devil's going on? Thundering typhoons! What's going on, Tintin? Tintin! <laughs> ah, at last our friend is coming round. Up you get, young man. We are going for a little walk. I tell you, I don't have the parchments. You'll we'll see about that. And I don't have to tell you. One false move and I'll shoot you like a dog. You're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> don't use my name in vain. Look, <laughs> 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 you've bitten his gun hand. Now, let's see what you're both like at boxing. A right hook for you. <laughs> and a left jab for you. <laughs> Good old Snowy, you managed to find me. Once I get the bit between my teeth, I never give up. Hooray, Captain Haddock and the Thompson twins. Oh, my word, a party. Are you all right? I am now, Captain. Don't touch me, I'm innocent, I tell you. Extremely likely. Deep with sight, extremely unlikely. It's true. Nestor acted in good faith. Thank you, sir. It's those two thugs that need to be put in handcuffs. Up you get, you two. Deep with sight. Get up now. Captain, tell me how you came to be here. That Barnaby fellow, after hanging between life and death, he'd just come round and identified his attackers. There was no time to lose. I warned the police at once and we rushed here. Here we are. Two caged birds. <laughs> <laughs> Two caged birds. Very funny. Oh, dear, that's ruffled his feathers. And now a triumph for the forces of law and order, too, I think you'll find. Now, what about the pickpocket? Have you managed to lay hands on him? Oh, uh, not yet. Uh, but it won't be long now. If my hunch is correct, it is he that holds the secret of the unicorn. Golly! We got his name from the Peter. He's called Aristides Silk. We were just about to pull him in when we were ordered here to arrest the bird So, here we are. Well, there we go. What was his name again? Aristides Silk. Well, I think it's time we Aristided him. Oh. <laughs> We arrest you in the name of the law. <coughs> arrest me? Yes, then. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Silk, but could you explain the meaning of this vast collection of wallets? I, uh, uh, yes, well, you see, I, it's something stronger than me. I adore wallets. What? Oh, same with me and bones. It's incredible. They're in alphabetical order with the owner's name on them. I wonder if by some incredible coincidence under the letter B... Hooray! Property of Barnaby, pinched on the 1st of May. Goodness gracious. This belongs to me, property of Thompson. And this one's yours. Property of Thompson. Property of Thompson. 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 Property of Thompson. Property of Thompson. Red Rackham's treasure is ours. Yeah, it's easy enough to say. Red Rackham's treasure is ours. Yes, you're right, Captain. Three <laughs> brothers joined. Of course. I've got it. Oh. The message is right when it says that it's from light, that light will dawn. Look, I put the three parchments together and thus hold them sailing in company in front of the light. Yeah. Look now, see what comes through. Thundering typhoons! The numbers and letters come together. It gives us a latitude and longitude. Obviously telling us where the unicorn sank. Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> now, Captain... When do we leave on our treasure hunt? Ah, let's see. Well, first we need a ship. Then we need a crew, some diving suits, and all the right equipment for this sort of expedition. Uh, <clears throat> rum, whiskey... And then Red Rackham's treasure will be ours. <laughs> But of course, it wasn't going to be that easy. This voyage in search of treasure would be full of danger. And despite the aid of a shark-proof submarine and a mad professor, we would have no time for leisure when we went in search of Red Rackham's treasure.
The Secret of the Unicorn starred Leo McKern as Captain Haddock, Richard Pierce as Tintin, Andrew Sachs as Snowy, and Charles Kay as the Thompson Twins. With Colin McFarlane as Barnaby, Brett Usher as Max Bird, Neil Roberts as George Bird, and Clarence Smith as Mr. Silk. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The Adventures of Tintin by Hergé are dramatised by Simon Eastwood and produced by John York. Tune in next week, same network, same time.